but instead, they were awed by the service. They were surprised that they really enjoyed the service. And after service, they went to brunch with the girls and some of their friends. They were awed by the conversation and were interested in visiting again. Their mother claimed to be a Christian, but seldom attended church, just special occasions. Most Sundays, she played cards with her friends. Their father was a military man and seldom home. So, unknowing to their mother, they went to Sunday services, attended Sunday school, and even attended Wednesday night service. They became interested in becoming Christians and joining the church that the girls attended. But one thing held them back, or should I say one person held them back. The mother of the two boys, who even though she did attend regularly or insist that they attend, was very critical of the Baptist denomination along with other Protestant churches. They were also concerned about the group at school. What would they say? Most of the ones they formerly hung out with criticized the ones who went to church. Let's join them now. There's something going on with my boys. I just can't figure out what it is. These boys have changed radically. And I know they're trying to hide something from me. And it has because they're so secretive, so sneaky. But I must admit, the change has been pretty good. They no longer stay out. No more sneaking in. They're dressed. They're bathing and smelling. <laughs> they even. I don't have to scream at them to loud music. Them. I don't even have a house to clean their room. Even their grades are better this grading period. should be happy, but something in the back of my mind is telling me that something that I will not be pleased with by being good so I won't find out. Now, I normally go play bingo on Wednesday nights, and I don't ever see them leaving nor coming back. But I know they going somewhere on Wednesday night. But I'm going to find out tonight. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, man. Whenever we make it to the car, I got to find me a limp roller. Can't be tired. Babe. Mom? Mom? What are you doing home? Yeah, Mom. What are you doing here? You're normally playing bingo on Wednesday nights. Baby, this is my house. And I could stay home if I want to stay home. Oh, Lord. Now, I knew you all were up to something. That's why I stayed home to find out what you were up to. Now, I know you're up to something because you two have changed so much. I mean, you're just being too good. There's a drastic change in your behavior, a change in your attire. Look at you. And even grades. But, Mom. I thought that's what you always wanted. Yeah, yeah, but it just makes me so comfortable. I mean, my mind is telling me that something's going on that I just won't like. Well, our change is not because of something. It's because of two girls. I knew it! Oh, I knew it! I bet they some street witches. <laughs> street witches? What's a street witch? You ever heard that before? I don't know what that is. Bro. We have to go or we'll be late. Yeah, I got you. Come I'm driving. Here. I'm not fitting with you. <laughs> Boys, my. Hello, Sasha. Yes. 
Can you please immediately? Of course, I'll be there. Okay. Okay. I'm here. Oh, Sasha, it's so good to see you. What is it? What's the big emergency? Well, you know how I've been telling you about my boy. Strange behavior, right? Yes. Well, I found out tonight that it's not what, but who. The boys are in a relationship with two girls, and I bet my last dollar they are members of some cult or two. Gee, mamas. <laughs> oh, Valerie, you can come up with the strangest names to match. Tell me about it. Well, the latest is I stayed home from playing bingo tonight to confront them. And girl, they were shocked to see me. I demanded to know where they were going and about the changes in them. They said two girls and rushed right out of the doors talking about they'll be back later. Oh, Valerie, I just don't understand the change in you. You complained about how the boys didn't obey your curfew. You complained about how they dress. You complained about how they didn't keep their room clean. You complained about the loud music playing on the radio and not all that stuff, and you're still complaining. Oh. I don't see anything wrong with the boys, but I see many things wrong with you. Since your husband has been away, you hardly ever go out to, tr you, you have changed. Yes, you have changed. Mm. You hardly ever go out to church and you are out late at night playing bingo or bridge. Mm -hmm. And you only call me at times like this, shame on you. You need the Lord, that's what you need. <laughs> Any normal mother would be proud of her boys. Have you complimented them on their changes? He hello? Sure. That that would be okay. Bring them on. Who was that? What was that? Girl, the boys are bringing those girls by here. They want me to meet them. Good for them, smart boys. Treat them kindly, real respect. You hear me now? Oh. <laughs> Hey, Miss Sasha. Um, Hello. Mom, Miss Sasha, I'd like you to meet my friend. Hi, it's so nice to, nice to meet you. It's Hello. nice to meet you. Hey, Mom, hey, Miss Sasha. Meet my friend Adriana. Hello. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> well, who's gonna tell me what's been going on here? Uh, well, Mom, you know how we've been trying to get to change, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Melissa is in the same senior class with me, and Adriana's in the same junior class with Darius. And well, after lunch, we would try and pick and choose which girls we would hit on. After school, waiting for the buses, and after then, we decided which girls we'd hit on. Most of them would run to our team so quickly, and then we'd arrange dates. Well, there was one guy named Troy, and his parents were normally out on Friday and Saturday nights, so we would go party in his basement. Except for we realized that Melissa and Adriana didn't really respond. Challenge to get the girls to commit to our ways. One day, I went up to Adriana and wrapped my arm around her neck, and she told me in a believable tone not to ever touch her again. <laughs> After that, I tried to play Mr. Nice Guy, and I've been hooked ever since. And basically, the same thing happened to me. Girls, what what are you up to? I mean, what's really going on here? First of all, I'm very happy to meet you, and thank you so much for allowing us into your home. Thank you so much for allowing us into your home. First, me and Melissa have been friends for like ever. Our parents are friends, so we do everything together. And we knew about the boys' gang before they even approached us. We just didn't like the gang that they hung out with. Mm. Eventually, we went to the skating rink, then the movies, and some school affairs. And they are really nice young gentlemen. Eventually, Easter rolled around, and so did our Easter service. Of course, we asked the boys to come. 
And then they said no, 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 and then no again. <laughs> but eventually we wore them down and they attended service with us. Afterwards, we went to brunch with a few of our friends from church and they really enjoyed themselves. Ever since then, we've been going to Sunday and Wednesday night service. You mean church every Sunday and Wednesday night? Oh, That's what I just said. What kind of church is that? <laughs> Something was wrong, a coat. Hmm. That's what it is. Oh, no, Mrs. Hutchinson. We are bona fide Christ-believing church girls. Well, what denomination is it? Jehovah Witness? Whoa, I think you got it confused. We are Baptists. Oh, Lord, that's almost as bad. You better get your Mrs. mama. <laughs> Mrs. Hutchinson, <laughs> we believe in God, three and one, Father, Son, and Holy mm. Spirit. We believe that if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're saved. After that, you live a spirit-filled life, loving, caring, and reaching out to others. Yes, Romans 10 verses 9 through 10 says, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you are saved. Miss Hutchinson, are you saved? <laughs> oh, yes. That's a call. Oh, my uh, God. The fact that you quoted scripture Brainwashed, that's what you are. And talk like that, a young person your age? Yep, that's the code, all right. And you got my boys all hooked up in it. And people in cults memorize many scriptures to impress and confuse people. Mom, are you serious? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Miss Hutchinson, the boys are coming to our church later to get baptized. Maybe you should come along. Please, Mom. I mean, you can already see the change in us, right? Yeah. And I mean, yeah, we get picked on a little bit every now and again at school, but we're happier than we've ever been. Yeah, so, Mom. come on, would you please? Just once? Well, why don't we say a prayer before we go? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that you touch Miss Hutchinson's heart, soul, and mind at this time. We ask that you help her understand that she needs you in her life. Help her to repent for her wrong actions and doings. Deep down, she is still a good person who has strayed away from you. Re remove her heart and remind her of your love and Touch her heart and remind her that your son Jesus lived a life of perfection, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love you, friend. Oh, I love you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> forgive you but you need to ask the Lord for forgiveness first will you pray now we all love and forgive you so go ahead and pray okay. <laughs> uh, Father, please forgive me I have been wrong I have strayed from the path of righteousness and I'm so ashamed Why did I do it? Why did I betray Jesus Christ? 
he always treated me as he treated the other disciples. And as I think about it, he knew that I'd betray him all along. But he never treated me any differently. He even let me be the treasurer, and he probably knew no. No, he definitely knew that I was dipping into the funds for my own personal wants, but he still treated me fairly. So why did I betray him? Why did I betray him? What inside me made me approach the chief priest with the deal to deliver Jesus into the hands of the Sanhedrin council? When they offered the 30 pieces of silver, I hurriedly accepted. I was only thinking about the silver. I didn't think that they would do Jesus like this. I thought, I thought, I thought maybe they'd put him in a dungeon to keep him away from people and to keep him from drawing large crowds, but nothing, nothing, nothing like this. And now, now I hear that the chief priest is sentencing him to death by crucifixion. Such a cruel, horrible, slow, humiliating death. Oh, oh, how I wish I could turn back time. Jesus did nothing but good. He was loved by many and he performed many miracles. I was right there watching when he healed the mother of Peter's wife, when he healed the deaf mute of the copolis, when he healed the paralytic at Bethesda, when he healed blind Bartimaeus. I seen him give sight to the blind. I saw him feed thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. I saw him calm a storm right in the middle of a sea. Jesus performed some 37 miracles throughout his three years of ministry, but in spite of all the good things Christ did, I betrayed him. And with a kiss of all things. Why, why, why didn't I think this through? I know why. It was greed. Just plain old greed. I couldn't resist the 30 pieces of silver, and now realizing what I've done, I'm filled with remorse. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't live with what I've done. I'll find the nearest tree and hang myself.
Now the next day that followed, the day of preparation, the chief and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he has risen from the dead, so that the last deception will be worse than that of the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way. Make it as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Let us look in on them. Forward! don't understand this at all. Don't understand what? I don't understand why we was paid to sit out here to guard a dead man in a tomb with a rock in front of it, and the tomb is sealed. And why do they need six of us? Don't you remember? When he was alive, he said he would rise on the third day, and this is the third day. Why would anyone believe him? He looks really dead to me. The Jewish leaders are afraid his disciples may come and try to steal his body to make it look as if he rose, just as he predicted. Now I remember why we are here. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. I did. Let's get out of here and go tell the high priest what we just He talking. won't be happy. He will be joyous. Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus cast seven devils, Mary, the mother of James the Less, and Salome, the mother of James and John, carrying baskets with spices and ointments to anoint Jesus' body. How can the day dawn so beautiful and bright when there's so much sadness within our souls? I feel as though my world ended. When Jesus was crucified, <laughs> he brought so much hope into our lives. Everyone said he was to be yeah. our savior, our deliverer. Why, I have hopes of my two sons, James and John, one sitting on the left and the other on his right when he came into his kingdom. But now that he is dead, all hope is gone. I can hardly bear it. It was he who gave me my life again. Demons had destroyed me. I was tortured day and night. 
But then, if I would get up, I heard about this man called Jesus. He healed me. He changed my life completely. <laughs> <laughs> we all are sorely grieved <laughs> over what has happened. <laughs> he was my own dear sister Mary's son, <laughs> and she was right there. <laughs> she watched him in agony. <laughs> As he suffered <laughs> and he died. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we can't stand here crying. We must go and prepare his body at once. This is the dawning of the third day. <laughs> oh, I got something. What? What? Help us. Who will roll back the stone that at the interest of his tomb. Oh, yeah. oh, I forgot. It's much too heavy for us. <laughs> we are so close. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yes. <laughs> oh, now look. <gasps> the stone is oh. rolled away. <laughs> the tomb is open. Oh. Jesus' body is <laughs> Why are you crying? Don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said before he died. Now go and give these messages to his disciples and Peter. You will, he is going ahead of you before Galilee. You will see him there just as he said before he died. Go now. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Thank Come you. On. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on. Sisters, tell me, why are you crying? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Who is it here that you see? Looking for Jesus, sir. If you have taken him away, tell us where you put him. Yes. And we will go and get him. Yes. Mary. Oh. Wait. You cannot touch me just yet. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. But here is what I need you to do. I need you to go back into the city of Galilee and tell my brothers that I will meet them there. Can you do this for me? Yes, Jesus. Go now. Hallelujah. <laughs> God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and Forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon <laughs> and empty. Prove 
our Savior lives because he Then, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Well, brethren, here we are, yeah. all of us together, and we're waiting to see Jesus. Yeah. He told us all alone that he would be crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day. But I just couldn't believe that. 
See, I can speak for myself, but what I can't explain is why I didn't fully comprehend what he really meant. You see, I thought all along that he was going to set up a temple here on earth. But now, I'm so ashamed of myself because I swore, I swore I would never leave Jesus' side. You did? And I was so bold. I even drew out a sword and cut what? What? off Malchus here. But I was protecting my Savior. But when it came down to that trial, when it came to that trial, I hid amongst the crowd because I was afraid for myself. Well, Peter, you ain't the only one that was afraid. At least you were somewhere near Jesus. That's right. The rest of us, we were so afraid. We ran away and hid. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. But what could we do? We were powerless. That's right. And outnumbered. Just a minute. Yeah. We were cowards. Still are cowards. Cowards. All of you are correct. You are correct. We just didn't want to believe what Jesus said. And I didn't want to believe what Jesus said. You? Jesus told me that I'll knock on three times before the cock crowed. But I just knew I wouldn't do that to my Lord and Savior. I just knew that I would never, ever, ever deny my Lord and Savior Jesus. But that's what I did. It was such a horrible sight watching him being beaten by the Roman soldiers. No. They stripped him of his robe. Oh, my goodness. They took a crown, a crown of thorns, no. and they placed it on his oh, head. No, 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 no. It was just too much for me to bear. Watching his body flinch every time they hit him oh, with that man. will. His back, oh. his back was just covered with blood. Oh. And blood, blood was just streaming down his face. Oh. Oh. And I must confess, I was so afraid that somebody was going to recognize me. Oh, no. oh. And the young dancer did. Uh. And she asked me, in front of the whole crowd. Aren't you one of his disciples too? No. And each time, I denied it. No. Oh, no. Finally, no. the third time, I strongly denied it. No. And then, <laughs> oh, Peter. then the cock crowed. Oh, no. Oh, man. And there was Jesus. He looked me right in my eye. Oh, no, 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 no. And there is this that moment of him carrying around this guilty feeling. Oh, no, 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 no. Wondering if Jesus will forgive me because I need Jesus to forgive me. Oh, no. I need to forgive me. Oh. And poor <laughs> Judas, he went out and hung himself after he betrayed Jesus. What? Yes. I guess he didn't want us or anyone else to know what he had done. True. I wonder why he did that. Jesus said he will remember. Everything he told us has come to pass. Somehow, we just didn't believe him. Yes. All the things we seen Jesus do with our own eyes, we didn't believe because we didn't want to believe it could happen. The disciples mumble 
to themselves affirmatively. At that point, there was a loud pounding on the door. Wait! Don't move! Let me see who it is. Two disciples, not of the twelve, rush in excitedly. Guess who we just saw? Who? Guess who we just saw? Who? Yeah. We saw Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Would you would you slow down? Can you slow down? You both are talking so fast, I can hardly understand what you are saying. Would you take a seat? Would you take a seat? Would you take a seat? And would you take a breath? And you, you take a seat also. Take a seat. Now, it's hard to slow down. I'm so excited. We almost ran all the way back here just to tell you the good news. What news are you talking about? Jesus. We just saw Jesus, the real Jesus. Yes. We didn't recognize him at first. What we thought was a stranger drew near and started to talk to us. He looked like any other Jew, but he started to ask us a question. What kind of conversation are you having while you're walking and talking and looking so sad? I asked him, was he a stranger here in Jerusalem? Because everybody knows what happened to Jesus. And when he replied, what things? <laughs> I knew I was right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you know it was Jesus? It was Jesus. How do you know it was Jesus? Because he said he looked like any ordinary Jew. <laughs> well, I replied, we are talking about a certain person. A certain person of Jesus of Nazareth. A prophet indeed. The, the word before God and all the people. And how... And how our chief priests and our prophets condemned him to death and they crucified him. Whoa. But we were hoping that he would be to redeem Israel indeed. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Besides all this, this is the third day since these things happened. And yes, certain women in our company who arrived at the tomb early, well, they punished us when they said they could find his body. They even said they had seen an angel, what? and they said he What? Yes. And a certain of those who was with us went to the tomb, and they found it just as the women had said. And him, they did not see. What? Oh. Well, he lost me when he said, Oh, foolish one, and slow of heart to believe, and all that the prophets had spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he expounded with us in all the scriptures and all the things concerning him. Really, by that time, you'd have asked who he was. Now nah, look who's interrupting. No, no, no. I was just so overwhelmed by his knowledge of the scripture, I just wanted to hear all he had to say. I told you, we saw Jesus. He's alive. This is Jesus alive. appears to his disciples. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Oh! Whoa! 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 Later on that third day, the disciples were still gathered together. Jesus? And Jesus stood before them in the midst. And they were terrified and frightened. Peace. Suppose they had seen a spirit. Peace unto you. Peace unto you. For I sense doubt and fear in your hearts. Peace. Behold and see that it is I. For a spirit does not have flesh and bone as I. Come, take and see that it is me. It is it really Jesus. Is. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, and yet they still did not believe with joy and marvel. Jesus, Jesus, is, is that really you? It is I, Peter. Oh, my God. You are here, just like we said. Come on. Do 
before we get you something to eat? He was given a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb by the women, and he took it and ate in their presence. The disciples and others gathered around him. choking on a honeycomb. These are the, all of the things that I told you while I was still with you. All of these things must happen. That Christ must die, be crucified, buried, but on the third day he will rise so that the repentance and the remission of sins will be preached in his name to all people in all generations. And just as my Father has sent me, I shall send each and every one of you. Yes. Now behold, receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ask of their sins to be forgiven. Yes, and you choose to forgive them, yes, they will be forgiven. But if you choose not to forgive them, they will not. Be forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. 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 Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with Jesus when he came. Jesus was here. He came in later to join the disciples. Thomas, Thomas, we seen Jesus. We seen what? the Lord, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Thomas? No. Oh. What? We seen Jesus. Thomas, we saw. We just, yes. It's true, it's true. It's true Thomas. Thomas. We did see Jesus. Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. He's a, I don't believe you. Oh, Thomas. He's here, Thomas. We saw him. We saw him. What don't he be saw him? Jesus. We, just saw him. we saw him in the flesh. Unless I see in his hand the print of the nail and stick my finger into the print of the nail oh, come on, come on. and my hand into his side, I would not believe. Oh, yeah. oh, we all saw him, Thomas. Oh, Jesus Thomas. is alive. He is alive. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Thomas. We saw it, Thomas. No. It's true. And some days later, the disciples were still assembled inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came through the door, even though it was shut, Jesus. and stood Jesus. in the midst. Jesus. Jesus. They all greeted him Jesus. with joy Jesus. and gathered around him. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. 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 See each and every one. Thomas, come. Behold, take my hand and see where they pierced me in each of my hands. Reach here up and see where the nail went through. Thomas, do not be unbelieving, but believe. My Lord and my God. Thomas, verily I say unto you this, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those that have not seen and still believe. Amen. Then Jesus disappeared again. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Yes. Now you believe us. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Unbelief. Now you believe. Good. Yes, Lord. You're going this way. Hallelujah. Get the chairs.
man in this who died for me and set me free. Tell me what kind a man in this who died for me and set me free. What kind of man is this who will leave his heavenly home and come down and come down to
Now the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain, which Jesus appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Unto you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. All power has been given unto me and in earth. Here's my final commandment to you. Therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the I want you to teach them to observe all of the things that I have commanded you. And lo, remember this, that I will be with each and every one of you always, even unto the end of the age. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank now when he had spoken Hallelujah. these Hallelujah. things. Hallelujah. Thank you. While they watched, Hallelujah. he was taken up and received out of their sight. And while they watched steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said unto them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go up into heaven. Those presents raised their hands and began to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. They worship him Hallelujah. and then return to Jerusalem filled yeah. with great joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus lives. Yes. It's like he said. It's like he said. These final words of Jesus form what is called the Great Commission. The Great Commission was not just meant for Jesus' disciples only, but for all of us who are believers. Jesus wants us to know that he is the foundation for the church because God has given him complete authority. Secondly, he commands us, instructs us to go and make disciples of everyone, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he reminded us that, lo, he will be with us always. That should give us security and courage when it comes to witnessing the people, knowing that what we're doing for Christ, he stands by us as we witness to other people. So I'm asking you, are we obeying the Great Commission? Are we trying to make disciples for Christ? What's our excuse? You know what? Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you. And you ought to be willing to tell everybody you know about the risen Savior. Because he rose, one day we can get up and go be with him in glory. That's shouting news right there. So in the words of a great song, that CJ song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all my fears are gone. Because I know who owes my future. And life is worth living. Why? Because he lives. We serve a risen Savior. He is not a dead Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. Praise him. Praise him! Praise him! He's worthy! Praise him! Don't be ashamed! I don't care. We in a we in a passion, but he still desires our praise. Am I the only one? I should see some people like popping up like popcorn. Praising the Lord right now. Because he lives.
I'm so excited, I'm so happy, overjoyed that Jesus, Jesus loved me. Let's celebrate the Lord today. Oh, 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 he washed my sins away. Oh, oh, the blood he shed for me, yeah, yeah, way back. On Calvary, oh, oh, the blood he shed for me, yeah, yeah, way back on Calvary. I can't forget the day that I heard the preacher say, stay there. Me. Me. Let's celebrate, Let's celebrate the Lord. The Lord Cause He's the one. He All my sins away. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 He shed for me. Yeah. For me. Way, 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 way back. Hey, on Calvary. On Calvary. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 He shed for me. Yeah. For me. Way, way. Come on, choir. When I heard the preacher, stay there. What day it was, choir? And he stayed there. Saturday night, y'all. But early. I said early. Sunday morning. Oh, he rose.
how we thank the Lord once again for a great night. Great night. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his goodness. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for sending his son, Jesus, to Christ. Oh, let me say that again. Let's give the Lord God a hand clap of praise for sending Jesus Christ. The reason why we did what we did tonight was because of what God did for us. And listen, we're here tonight because there might be someone here that came to watch a, a pageant, came to have fun, came to laugh, but somehow, some way, something was said tonight that started touching your heart. You might think that that was somebody like your friend pulling on you, but God was really trying to reach your heart tonight because he didn't send his son, Jesus Christ, just so we can have a, a nice pageant. But he sent his son, Jesus Christ, so that someone may be saved. And so if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, tonight will be a good night. We have counselors here tonight will begin to share with you the word of God because we want to make sure that when you get ready to leave here tonight, you leave here saved. Tomorrow, the next moment is not promised to you. What is promised? God said in his word that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. No matter how long you've been bad or no matter how long you did some things, the Lord has promised that if you just confess and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So if you're here tonight, if you're in the balcony, just stand where you are. Someone will share with you. Someone will come to you and share with you the word of God because we want to make sure that you do not just leave here saying, man, that was a good play. But leave here saying to yourself that I'm, I'm so thankful that God gave me an opportunity to be saved. There are a lot of saved folk in here. But again, we have all had to make one step. And as a result of us making that one step, God has promised us that not only he would be there with us, but he would help us, encourage us, keep us in midst of all the things that we may go through. So if you're here tonight, why don't you just stand where you are? If everyone is, is, is saved, everyone believes in, in, in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Come on, stand up where you are. Stand up where you are. Stand up where you are. Come on, stand up. Everybody stand up. Stand up, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. You've been sitting down for an hour and 30 some minutes. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his goodness, for his grace but also for these individuals who took out their time to make sure that everything goes according to God's plan. So at this time, Reverend Sarton is going to come back, make some acknowledgments, and then uh, we will have our closing remarks and our benediction. You may be seated. Were you blessed tonight? Come on, were you really blessed? This was more than just a pageant. This was a visible presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we hope you got the message. He rose. At this time, I would like to introduce the participants and the cast for the Cathedral of Faith 2024 Easter pageant. Amen. I would like for our welcoming presentation group to come up and take the stand right in front of here. Amen. Next, I would like for our Cathedral of Faith 2024 praise dancers, are you still here? Would you come on in, please? All the praise dancers. Amen. This is our youth, y'all. This is our youth. This is the future generation right here. Worshiping Christ. Uh, 
I want you to know that at rehearsal, they didn't just rehearse, they worshiped. Did you hear what I just said? They worshiped. They were more than just into the music. They were worshiping their God, creative, creative, amen. Next, I would like for you to meet our publicity committee, the ones who are responsible for putting all this together and publicizing it. Would they stand? Brother J.D. Apple and Laura Treat and Love, would you come forward? Lola Gatlin, are you here? Sister Laura Treat, Sister Treat. Oh, she behind me? Oh, okay. And there they are. That's our publicity committee. <coughs> and then we have our culinary committee, the ones who are responsible for feeding us during these long rehearsals. Amen. Brother and sister boys, <coughs> would you come forth? I know Brother Boyce is coming. There he is right there. Amen. And one more. Next is our costume committee, the ones who are responsible for not only creating the costume, putting them together, and then measuring us to make sure they fit right. Could they come up, amen? Our costume committee, Sister Karen uh, Tigner and, La and Harriet Anderson. And we would like to thank should I say thank the Cathedral of Faith Mass Choir? Didn't they bless our hearts tonight? And now for our scenery committee, the ones that were responsible for putting the props together, changing out the stages, and that was timed, and they did a fantastic job. We all of you come forward. Our prop and scenery committee. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like for you to meet, see our Cathedral of Faith cast, the ones responsible tonight. I would like for Act One, Scene One, the mom repents that cast. Would you come forward, please? Amen. That's, that's act one, scene one. Act two, scene one, the empty tomb cast. Would you come forward, please? The empty tomb, Jesus, I mean, the angel, amen. The cast from act two, scene two. Now the cast from act two, scene three, Jesus ascends to heaven. I mean, the disciples, will you come out, please? Act two, scene two, Jesus appears to the disciples. These are the disciples. <laughs> Act two, scene three, Jesus ascends to heaven. Let Thomas come out and the rest of the cast. Now, my brothers and sisters, Miss Mamie Garden is very creative. I'm going to do something in a minute. She's very creative at 91. I have trouble remembering where my key's at. And here she is, I'm going to tell you in a minute. But she decided to add a new character to this pageant. Playing the part of Judas is none other than Jonathan McGowan. And finally, playing the part of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, none other than Reverend Torian Tucker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my, thank you.
loud there. I know I'm, I talk loud, but please. It is my honor and my privilege to present to you the person who created all of this, envisioned all of this, wrote all of this, directed this, produced this. It's none other than our own Cathedral of Faith pageant queen, Sister Mamie Gardner. too excited. <laughs> Amen. But we haven't finished yet. There are some other people that you need to see. Uh, Sister Elaine, Sister Eli, and Sister Brittany Simmons, who directed the young people. Uh, our welcome committee, our narrators, all our narrators come forward. Tony Paley, Tina Griffin, Reverend Sarton, and Charles Taylor. All right, the modern day skit, Sister Barbara Newman, and the director, where's Bar Sister Barbara? All right. Now we have uh, audio. I know that they can get here, Brother John, who's in charge of, uh, John Eugene, in charge of them. All right. And we have someone special with us, a volunteer who's not a member, Brother Jonathan Williams. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, I'd like Sister Diane. Well, Diane. All right, and I call Sister Diane my left hand because everything that I forget, she remembers. And some things I don't even think about in the first place, and she reminds me of it. So uh, let's give all of them a great big hand. Testing one, testing one, two. And now I want to say to you all, you, you remember what I told you in the room? That you were going to be excellent? You were excellent. I want you to know I love all of you and how much I appreciate you for giving up your time to make uh, my vision a reality. As I said to them, a vision isn't any good unless you have someone to make the vision a reality. All right, I forgot my friend. Come on up here, Sister Lois. <laughs> she has been our timekeeper and lets us know how much time we spent a little bit more this year than we planned to, but I certainly hope everyone enjoyed it because what I wanted to do, my vision was to include uh, all ages of the church in the pageant. And so as you see that, we were able to get everyone here. And I give God the glory. I am so excited that the Lord has chosen to use me at 91. Now, and I have to give my little testimony right fast. Uh, in October, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And, uh, and of course, I said, Lord, I'm 91. Why me? But it's good to know the Lord. 
And it's good to know the word because about three seconds after that, look like the Lord said, why not you? And then I thought about Job. I said, well, okay, Lord, I'm through. I'm not, I am not. I don't have any more questions, whatever you have for me. Then I said I wanted to go to MD Anderson. And I was discouraged, girl, you can't get in MD Anderson. But I had some friends who are my friends here that, that helped me get in the MD Anderson. They told me to come, Monty, and, and stand up, Monty, and, and Jolene. <laughs> Yeah, I said, I know, it's, I know some people in high places. <laughs> I said, all right, talk about it. And so in about a week's time, I got a call from MD Anderson. And, uh, and, Eric, and, and God has just been so, so good. I just have to share that with everybody. That I was so, I read all about the pain and all of that to go through and all of this, that, and other. Do you all know I have not had one minute of pain? <laughs> not one minute of pain. And I am just overjoyed to give God the glory and all the people that I asked to pray for me and my pastor and my daughter. Where's my pastor? Is my pastor hiding tonight? I know he's here. Oh, he left again? <laughs> Where's my daughter, Denise? Stand up, Denise. <laughs> yeah. So all of them, uh, I, I appreciate my son-in-law and my daughter because they've taken very good care of me. And I've taken enough of your time. But I just want to thank you again for coming out. If we did all of this, if there was nobody here, yeah, we would, uh, it would be all lost. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. I love you, I love you, I love you. Don't, don't sit down yet. Here's the same thing about Miss Mamie. When Miss Mamie calls and asks a person to be a part of something that she's, no one can say no to her. It is very difficult, not because she fusses or not because she puts pressure on you. It's because of the love we see coming out of her. Every person here came out because she asked them to. And that's because how we feel about you. Brother Appling, would you please express the rest of my, her feelings? Testing one, two, and we appreciate you so much. But first of all, we have a card for this young man. He was so wonderful for the cast, for his appreciation right here. Mr. Johnson Williams, we thank you so very much for all that you did. Thank you, sir. And he owns his own acting company, his own company, so let's give him a hand. A very good, beautiful young man. But more than anything, to the queen, we thank you, we appreciate you, and we love you. And this shows our appreciation for what you do. And she's already got the one planned for next year, I understand. So we thank you, we appreciate you, and everybody here, come on, let's give a have a big I love you. We love you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 Easter pageant cast. Amen. And will you hold for one minute while they take a group picture? Reverend Wilson. At that time, you can do the benediction. Let me take the picture. You ready? Amen. Come on, let's give them another hand clap of praise for, for the hard work, for putting that uh, pageant on for us. Come on. We could do better than that. 
Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 We're going to have our uh, closing remarks. Uh, uh, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Before, before you all leave, let's uh, have our final remarks and a benediction. While they are doing that, the reason why Pastor Mack is not here right now, um, he did get a phone call from uh, Brother Bird and saying that uh, things are uh, going a different way for Sister Bird at this moment. And so that's why uh, I, I love it. And Karen Pastor uh, said, uh, Reverend Wilson, uh, you close us out. And uh, he went to the hospital to be with the family right now. Uh, don't know everything, but again, uh, continue to pray for Sister Pam and her, her and her family but also continue to pray for our pastor as he continues to lead in, in our, our congregation. Amen. Sorry for interrupting. Ms. Mamie wanted me to make a special acknowledgement to the instructors of our praise dancers. Sister Meadows, would you stand? And Sister Avery, the ones who are responsible for our praise dancers. Amen. Amen. So why don't we all stand? Why don't we all stand? And let's have our final, our final prayer and benediction. Gracious God, we do thank you for a wonderful night. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us, God, to see, God, all the things that you did for us. God, as we make ready to leave on tonight, God, God, I pray, God, that Something was said and done, God, that, that touched us, that caused us to once again think about all that you did for us, the price you paid for us. But more importantly, God, think about, God, how, how many times, God, we, we let you down. And yet, God, you still look beyond our faults, God, and you see our needs. God, we thank you once again for Sister Gardner, God, we thank you, Lord God, for keeping her and holding her, God, and preserving life, God, and even giving her the clarity of mind, God, to put on this pageant, God. Thank you for all the, the many people, God, that gave up their time, God, and their talents, God, to put on display, God, your word in action. God, we thank you also, God, for everyone here on tonight, God, who came out, God, to support these individuals, God. God, we also pray and lift up right now, God, our sister right now, God. We pray that you would just touch her right now, God. God, you know everything about her. And because you know everything about her, God, we just put it all in your hands, God. God, bless our pastor, God, for being a loving and caring pastor, God. And we just pray even right now, God, that you would just work this situation out, God. And God, just like Sunday morning, God, when we come on sunrise service, God, God, we, we, we pray, God, that we could come, God, with another praise report, God, how you once again, God, delivered, how you once again healed, how you once again, God, changed things around, God. And so, God, keep us all, God. Hold us all, God. But more importantly, God, use us all, God, for your divine plan. God, as we get ready to leave, God, we want to leave under your guidance and under your protection, God. God, we thank you once again for this night. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You are dismissed. Join us for a special service at 6 o'clock a.m. As we celebrate Easter Sunday, witness the beauty of the sunrise, commemorating the resurrection of Jesus on the third day. Then celebrate with us at 11 o'clock Easter service, filled with music, an inspirational message, and a sense of community. Let's all come together to honor the significance of this day and rejoice in the hope, renewal that Easter brings. All are welcome to service and fellowship. 
see you Sunday. I'm not with